Hello, so I'm gonna co continue with Mark chapter 5. So it says, And they came over to the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. So I was also listening to the book of Ephesians and I was thinking about this man and how he's kind of like living where the dead are in the tombs and how he's crying and how he's cutting himself and there's this is kind of self destructive um thing about him and yet he still runs up to Jesus and he worships and he confesses that Jesus is the Son of the Most High God. So we have another confession um, that by someone that Jesus is the Son of God, and I was thinking um, when listening to the, the the book of Ephesians, how we are, the, how the fullness of God was to dwell in us, and we're living stones, and how our body is the temple of God, and how Satan came to steal and to kill and to destroy, and it was Jesus's body that ultimately um, was destroyed. He says, you know, destroy this temple in three days, and I will raise it up. And I was thinking how, you know, when I was watching the news about Palestine um, and the state that is occupying Palestine there, and how the people want to worship at dead stones, um, and how they seem to think that they need to go somewhere to pray, somewhere to do something for God, and how Jesus came to us, um, and so that the Spirit of God can dwell in us, and that we are the, the temple of the living God and living stones. Um, so yeah, this guy is like destroying, he's self-destructive and he's crying, um, and he's, yeah, just, he's got a kind of supernatural strength also. Um, and so then he says unto him, um, Jesus says unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the, into the swine, that we may enter into, enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea, um, and there were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. So like these devils, what they were doing to this man, they, they killed 2,000 sheep. It's a, I mean, not sheep, pigs, swine. Um, and so you can imagine, um, yeah, just what trouble this guy must have had. And then I was thinking about the last Bible study, how there's this, there's this kind of, how the nature was this um, with the storm, how there's this, chaos in nature and how this man is kind of filled with this I don't know chaotic these this legion of chaotic spirits that are causing him to destroy himself and um yeah it just it seems like he's kind of wild you know um and so it says and they that fed the swine fled and told it sorry and told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus to, and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. So you can imagine this must have been quite something um, to have known about this man and then to see him fine. Um, and then they that saw it told them, how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their curse, so they don't want Jesus there. And when he was coming to the ship, 
He that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis and how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. So yeah, I was also just thinking about um, my situation. Like I know that Jesus saved me. And there was this, just like this knowledge of what he'd done, this desire to tell other people about Jesus. Um, yeah, and then Jesus was passed over by ship unto the other side. Much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he followed his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch his, but his clothes, I shall be whole. So I think that when women are in a situation like this, they're also unclean, and they're not allowed to like touch priests. They're not allowed in the temple. They, they're almost like, uh, excluded in a in a way um uh and so she when she heard of jesus she came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said if i may touch but his clothes i shall be made whole and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague and jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him turned him about in the press and said who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. So, you know, seeing as so many people around, um, he almost singled her out by saying, Who touched my clothes? Because she said, If I just touch his garment. Um, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. So there's like this great moment of testimony. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. So Jesus makes us whole. Um, he came to just this the story of the man possessed. There's, there's this wholeness and soundness and um, peace and healing that he came to give. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troubles, tra troublest thou the master any further? So this is like on his way, you know. So you can imagine how the ruler of the synagogue is feeling. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. So he's like, even though people are... are you know, if they fear this power of God, this power of Jesus, in a, in a, in they, they don't understand it. He's always reassuring, be not afraid. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was coming, he said unto them, why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he took he took take took the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entered into where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talita Kumai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked for she was about the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with great astonishment, and he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and he commanded that something should be given her to eat. So there again, Jesus does this kind of strange thing where he tells the man healed, uh, who had the, the legion cast out of him, 
to go and tell everyone. Uh, but when it comes to to raising this little girl, he says, "Don't um, don't tell anyone." So that's quite interesting. Anyway, I'm gonna stop there. I don't want to talk too much. Um, but when I was thinking about, lastly, about this man who was possessed of the devil, I was thinking about um, this destruction of the flesh, um, the destruction of the body almost, and self-destruction and things like that. And sometimes for believers, we have these trials of faith. Um, and for the unbelievers, I think it's just that Satan once doesn't want you know, he wants to just actually destroy the temple of God, which is the bodies of people. Um, and he wants to bring it about before they are saved. Um, or, or, so that he doesn't want anyone to be saved. Satan doesn't, doesn't desire life or healing or sanity or peace for anyone. Um, he's like this kind of really malicious character who just wants to yeah, I wreak havoc. Um, yeah, so yeah, I was thinking about this test of faith. I was thinking about Abraham. But those are a little bit off. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, and then I was thinking about like in places like Thailand where the people put um, hooks in their cheeks and stuff. They do certain types of mutilation. I was thinking about the flagellations that priests used to do long ago. Um, and stuff like that. Jesus doesn't want us to do these things to our bodies. Um, and then there's another scripture that speaks about um, God giving people over to dishonoring of their bodies amongst themselves because they didn't want to hold on to the knowledge of the truth. Um, and then there's another scripture that talks about handing someone over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that the soul can be saved. And this is like a case of somebody who's like a believer who seems to have gone off on a tangent um, and just doesn't seem to be, I don't know what's going on there. But um, yeah, there's this kind of destruction of the flesh. Because this is how we worship God. We God is God came down to be with us and God in us. And when, yeah, the, the fullness of the Spirit dwells in us. We're the temple of God and we worship God in spirit and truth wherever we are. Um, okay, I don't want to talk too much because I'm rambling a bit. But anyway, I'll continue tomorrow. Oh, yeah, did I mention the living stones? I think I might have. But anyway, okay. <laughs>